All right, everybody. I am glad to announce that I am starting a brand new series. Now you're probably wondering, Joshi, why are you starting a new series and probably get forgotten after two episodes? Well, that's because I don't know. I just want to make a new series. You know, whenever I'm running out of ideas, bam, make a new series. So yeah, this is a new series. It's just called the Joshi Talks, and it's just gonna be me talking. So I hope you enjoy. While you see my um green bed and other things like this wall and these posters and this 3DS and this TV remote with faded out buttons. Yeah, there's that. So this is gonna be me talking for the whole video. Now I've already shared these things with um Corby64 on Hangouts, so he probably already he probably he already knows what I'm talking about in this video. I've told him. But you guys don't. <clears throat> so um enjoy. Also foot reveal, even though I've already shown it before. Get out of here. Disgusting, ugly, a uh, sickening foot. Anyway, so first off, I've discovered a new genre of content on YouTube that can only be described as Funding credit videos. Now, you remember those like um old like PBS shows where like you know at the end they always like major fundings for this show is brought to you by or and they just list the companies that you know provide the funding for the show. Well, these videos do that, but they don't make any sense. Like there's one for Ni Hao Kai Wan, for example, which by the way I'm still trying to find those downward doghouse shorts. If everyone has them, please contact me. Anyway, so someone made one for Nihao Kai Lan. <laughs> but it's sort of like having companies that would actually make sense for, that would fund TV shows. Instead, the companies are fast food places. So it's like major fundings for Nihao Kai Lan are brought to you by Burger King, McDonald's. And the best part about the McDonald's one is that he says the jingle too. He sings the jingle, but does it like fast. Actually, I don't know if it's a he or a she. It could be both. I'm just gonna say he for now, because, you know, why not? I don't think anyone's gonna care. But yeah, so he does the jingle. He does the whole jingle. Then he says, then he says Hardy's, Carl's Jr., which are the same exact restaurant, just with different names. So, yeah. I don't get why he could both of them. Then there's Dairy Queen, which the picture was weird, because it was like some lady or whatever, or some guy. With the Dairy Queen logo pasted over the face. Yeah, I don't know why that picture exists. And then, the best one of all. <laughs> Fruit Loops apparently funded the show. By the way, these companies didn't actually fund the show. These are all, like, fake. For some reason, these kids love making fake outros and fake information for these shows. You like misspreading information for some reason. Or, no, not misspreading information. Spreading fake information for shows. Not misspreading. Misspreading is not even a word. Misspreading. Anyway, <clears throat> so yeah, Fruit Loops apparently funded the show. Even though Fruit Loops isn't an actual company. It's not. Kellogg's made the cereal. Fruit Loops is just a cereal product that they made. Kellogg's is the company, and besides, Kellogg's doesn't even, like, they wouldn't even fund a TV show, because they're making cereal or whatever, they wouldn't make, they don't make shows, and then at the end, it just says, you know, the corporate, you know, I forgot what it was, the corporate, corporation for public broadcasting, there we go, I remember now, and then it says, you know, viewers like you fund the show, even though you don't, because you're just watching TV, but yeah, that was a weird, that, that's a weird genre I discovered. It's, like, up there with, like, the fake VHS openings and, like, you know, the go-animate grounded videos, you know. It falls into that category, like, it's, like, so weird, and, like, it's, like, such a weird, like, specific genre of video. I'm, like, why would anyone make that? Like, I don't get why. And the thing is, it wasn't, like, a slideshow either. It was, like, a, it was, like, a, someone recorded with their, like, phone recorder. You just recorded their computer screen, like, why? It doesn't make sense. Anyway, moving on. Time for the second topic, and probably the last. Actually, no, I have three I want to share. We'll get the second one out of the way, because I mean, we'll the third one out of the way, because the third one's quick. So, 
recently I've been experimenting with some N163 waves on Famic Tracker, and I've, you know, I only have, I've only made two, but I, I like how that sounds so far. Um, I'll make more later, but yeah, I just want to get that out of the way. I'll have an FTM link in the description. Oh, I'm sorry, an OCC link, because it's OCC Famic Tracker. Anyway, final topic, and probably the most disturbing one. Last night, I had a weird dream. Now you know how dreams go. Dreams are usually weird. But this one was like, like, super weird. Alright. So there's a little game called Frog Bit Quest. Uh, probably not. It's a pretty obscure game. It's actually pretty crappy. I've always considered it one of the worst games ever made. Well, not always. For like, the past couple years I have. It's pretty poorly made. There's a lot of bugs. You know, graphics aren't that nice. Music's good. Music's catchy. But other than that, it's just kind of a bad game with sloppy controls and bad voice acting, just bad and everything in general. And recently what happened is that I broke my old copy and cause, you know, one of the levels in the game didn't work anymore. It was the Cat Dragon Slayer. After I beat the level, the cutscene just wouldn't play. So I decided to just break it because, you know, it's worthless. But, you know, I don't know. I, I probably should just left it the way it is, but whatever. So I broke it, and then I we ordered a new one off of eBay. We being me and my parents. You know, I'm still a baby. So yeah, we ordered a new copy of eBay for seven bucks. It was a complete box, so that was nice. So yeah, that, this isn't part of the dream. This is like sort of like setup for it. So yeah. So yeah, the actual dream, such as me in my room, and I have a big box copy for a Frog request for PC, not for PS2, but for PC. Which is weird. I don't know why I had a PC version, but whatever. Yeah. Also, I don't know if it ever came in a big box like that. But yeah, apparently my dream it did. It came in a big box. And apparently I didn't bother checking the back of the box, because the back of the box actually has some, uh, secrets. Or, I guess, spoilers for the dream. So, yeah. Basically, I turned my computer to play the game, because I wanted to do a speedrun of it for a while now, because, um, your boy Brandon Scott Hill did one, so I thought, hey, I should do one too. So I boot up the game, and for some reason my computer kept opening up tabs by itself. I, I have no idea why. I thought maybe, maybe it's like um maybe they, maybe they have like some sort of like helper for you on your computer, like Cortana or whatever that like opens tabs for you and like does stuff. I don't know why, but yeah, it opened up tabs randomly by itself. So yeah, that was that was weird. But the weirdest part of all is once I boot up the game, you know, same title screen, same menu. But, for some odd reason, and just to remind you, I don't watch weird stuff like this, you know, stuff like, you know, stuff like this is just weird and bad. But yeah, for some reason, I boot up the game, and the intro cutscene, you know, the intro cutscene, where, you know, they're sitting on, like, the grass or whatever, like, next to the river, and, you know, the Frogger is like, man, I don't like this place anymore, I want to go and uh, be froggy free or whatever. And then his dad is like, oh, whoa, it is scary out there. <laughs> that was a, I'm sorry, I can't do impressions. But yeah, for some reason, that was replaced with Spongebob porn. Yeah, for some reason, that intro cutscene was replaced with MS Paint animations of Spongebob porn. Just to remind you, I don't watch this stuff in real life. It's bad. It's gross. You know, it's just disgusting. But for some reason, for some weird reason, that was in my dream. For some weird reason, I can't explain it either. It just was in there, and I'm like, why is this in the game? So then I thought, oh, maybe someone, maybe the owner previously, who previously had it, might, must have, like, changed the files. Because, you know, you know, it's a PC game, you can easily change the files for that stuff. I've done it before with, um, PC games. I've done it before with Moon Buggy, with Booyam for some crappy horse riding game. I've done it for a couple games. I'm actually planning on making um, Booyam Repainted, inspired by um, Games Repainted and their repaintings, which, by the way, you should watch it. They're pretty funny. But yeah, but however, even that, my my theory was, was quickly disproved when I saw that the back of the box actually had a screenshot of that intro cutscene with, you know, Spongebob and, you know, his friends just doing some weird crap. So I was like, wait, this was meant to be in the game. Why? Okay, first off, how do you always be putting porn in an E-rated game? Secondly, how come Nickelodeon and Viacom didn't sue them for using their characters? And three, 
Just, just why? Who would make that and put it in the game? Like, that's just bizarre. Just to remind you that I don't watch that stuff in real life. I should just keep, I gotta keep in mind this because people are gonna say, oh, you're weird or you're creepy for watching this stuff. I don't, okay? I, I'm not some creepy guy who watches Spongebob porn. Just to remind you, I don't do that stuff. That's bad. But, I don't get, but for some reason, that was in the, the game in my dream. And I have no idea why, but it was. And it's just, just trust me, I was just as weirded out as you would be. Like, watching this video. I was just as weirded out as you guys would be watching this. I was like, I was like, wow. And like, I was like the only one in the room too. Like, no one else was there. It was just me. I was like, no one else saw it. I was like, jeez. Like, I didn't even get to play the game. I just, I didn't even, like, bother just skipping the cutscene. I was just so, like, you know, baffled by it. But yeah, that that was that. So, I hope you enjoyed the first episode of the Joji Talks. It's, like, 11 minutes. It's been 11 minutes. I hope you enjoyed. hope you enjoyed my weird, freaking bizarre dream. And if you want to see more of these videos, just, uh, let me know. But if you don't, that's understandable, because, you know, I don't think, you know, I don't think it's great to start off a series by talking about Spongebob porn, but whatever. That's what happened in my dream, so might as well talk about it. So yeah, anyways, you know, I'll see you later. Bye. Famous Tracker songs and other videos are coming soon, and yeah, that's about it. Bye.